Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. My name is Joseph. I hope everyone's doing well. So in today's video, we're going to be covering basic menu buttons. Um, I'm just going back to basics, only because I was trawling through the data and I saw a few searches looking for menus. So I'm just going to show you guys my take on producing menus and the way I set them up. Um, but before I begin, I just want to say thank you to everyone again for the channel. You guys are all amazing. You have no clue. And I'll keep saying it until ever. So let's get into it. So what I've basically created here, and I'm just going to show you straight away, because this should hopefully be a nice quick tutorial, fingers crossed. So I've got a couple of buttons, and you can see when I hover my cursor over them, they activate. So if I click on, let's say, the setting one, I go to a settings room. I don't have any settings. This is just a skeleton um, framework for a game. So I can click back and you can see it takes me back to my start point. If I click exit, it will exit the game. And if I rerun it and go start, it will take me to the game room. So this is really easy to do, but I figured I wanted to just kind of plug in this little gap that people are asking questions around or doing searches for this. So the way I set up menus is through here in my game room, I set up my menu here. Um, you can get as fancy as you want with this. You can animate your buttons. You can do all kinds of things. The important key with your button is make sure it has an indication for when you're hovering over it. Because a player might hover over a button, but as a rule of thumb in design, you should always indicate that that player is hovering over that button. So the way I do that is in my sprite object here. So if I go to my start game object, I carry two parts. So I carry my actual awesomely drawn start button. And then I also have this blue outline I've also indicated. The other part to that is I've actually manually changed the mask to include the start button, but not the highlight, because you don't want it to highlight before the cursor makes contact. Now that we've covered that, let's look at the programming code. Thankfully today, today's code will be very simple. So if I go start, and I show you guys what I've done. So I've created a basic object. It's um, my start menu button. It's just got the start menu sprite attached to it. And then in here, in my step event, the first thing I do is, let me just expand it a bit for you guys obviously you guys need to see all of it so what I do so under my mouse click I do a simple check of does my mouse have a press yes and then I use double and or and instance position mouse X mouse Y all return I it needs to be my own ID which means it is again that old code I used for the joystick stuff where I identify which button I'm pressing on this means I don't have to use the check event for a mouse, I can do it straight in code. Then I just use the simple go to room function, which in this sense is room go to room game. Like I said, this is just a skeleton framework so you guys can see it. Now the animation, or not the animation, the um, drawing aspect is a little bit different. So I draw my sprite menu, and here, instead of doing um, what you would normally do, which is image, index which then just cycles the um, the index of that sprite meaning it will just go from one two three back to one two three so it will just cycle as an animation I actually set it as zero zero being the first instance of my image so if I bring this back out quickly so you'll see here in my back one this is sprite zero or index zero index two. Oh, sorry, index one. So if I come back up here, you'll see that I have, when my mouse is hovering using that same check code that I used in my um, mouse click, it does the same thing. It draws a sprite, but it draws sprite one, not sprite zero, meaning then I get a blue highlight. So the effect is, quite literally, it will highlight when I hover over the item. So then that way it gives the player a good indication when I'm trying to interact with that key. So that's basically the programming. The only bit of different programming I've used here is under my exit key. 
So all these other buttons have just been duplicated from the start game button. That's all I've done, and I've just changed the rooms I interact with. So here, for example, under my exit menu, the only thing that I've changed is under my step event, I use the end game function rather than go to room. So I actually just straight out end the game after that. So I hope this was helpful. Like I said, this was a very basic tutorial, um, only because I saw it was getting drudged up in the search options. And uh, it's a very simple thing, but it's good to know how to do it and different ways to do it. Like I say, I'm not infallible when it comes to this stuff. This is not the way, um, this is not set in stone the way you should do it. This is just the way I do it because I find it easiest for me and I'm just showing you guys how it works and the way I set it up. For example, you could set up more advanced ones where you could actually track controls and that. Um, but that takes a bit more programming and a bit more, not predictive, but making sure you know where things sit in your program. But I want to thank you guys. Make sure to stay awesome. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye.